Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Fair at Second Swing. We are outside today on a chilly fall day. We're gonna be going through the adjustability options on the Titleist TSI3 driver. Now, the SureFit hosel has been you know, a part of Titleist drivers for a while now, uh, but on the TSI3, they've added a weight track in the back uh, to uh, kind of adjust that center of gravity. Very easy to use, as we'll see here, um, and it can create uh, several yards of left to right dispersion as well for you. So a lot of adjustability options out there. Thomas is going to play with them. We're going to kind of maybe go to the extreme a little bit, see those differences. And then maybe Thomas will fit himself and see how we can do. So um, Thomas, in your history with using these settings, um, and then now what we have seen here with the new weight track, TSI3, what do you think we're going to see? Yeah, so there are plenty of different options to fit a customer in with regards to uh, adjusting the weight around the center of gravity around and also adjusting the hosel setting. So first thing you, you will see with the weight in the back here is you have five different options. So you have an H2, H1, neutral, T1, T2. So H2 is kind of your max draw bias. Yeah. That maybe bring the ball probably eight yards left of center at, at a rough estimate. T2 at the other end of the spectrum may bring the ball eight yards to the right of the center. So there's about approximately maybe about a 16 yard range that you can see with regards to adjustability, with regards to moving the center of gravity around yeah. on, on the, with the club. There's also 16 other options we have with the sure fit hosel adjustment. So A1 is standard. That's where we're going to start out here today, testing the, testing the clubs out. Um, we also can make the club completely fade bias by yeah. making it a little flatter, a little bit lower loft, going the way to extreme to like C1. Yeah. And then A3 at the other end of the spectrum, you can also adjust to be even more upright, give it more loft, make the ball, make it much easier for you to draw the ball. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to test a couple of those settings and then also uh, have you kind of figure yourself out and fit yourself maybe for a TSI3 driver. So uh, this should be a good one, Thomas. I'm excited to see. Yeah, well, let's get after it. Thomas, we're standard setting there. Weights in the neutral position in the back. Uh, everything as you know, it would be basically unpackaged, right? So, yep. Uh, A1, 10 degrees neutral setting. Nothing's right. been adjusted. All right. Thomas, that was three shots with everything as you know, standard, neutral, as it comes with the TSI-3. Um, now after those shots, what, you know, what kind of settings do you want to get into now after, you know, we maybe want to play with the extremes a little bit here? Yeah, so the first two shots I hit were basically pretty boring and, and dead straight. So neutral setting is kind of what I would expect. Um, now with regards to adjustability options, we can put the weight in the toe, we can put the weight in the heel. So let's explore those options here a little bit. So first one thing I'm going to do is going to put it in the toe. Okay. So I'm, I would expect it may be a little bit more of a kind of a fade by a shot now. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the, uh, the T2 setting. So with this new weight track in the back, there are essentially five settings that you can choose from on that weight. There's you know, two in the heel, two in the toe, yep, and then one that's neutral. And, you know, each one represents kind of, what, four yards or so, um, based on Titleist robotic testing anyway. Yeah, um, there's about a range of 16 yards. Okay. So T1 would be about eight, you know, robotic testing would maybe give about an eight yard fade bias. T, sorry, that's, sorry, T2 would give an eight yard fade bias. Yeah. T1 may give about a four yard fade bias. Okay. Neutral is pretty straight. H1, so a little more on the heel, is going to be four yard draw bias, and H2 would be essentially about a another four yards, so a total of eight yard draw okay. bias with that setting there too. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get to. So now we got it in the toe and the two setting. This is kind of the extreme toe setting, so to speak, of yep. the options. And so we'll play with that and see how that changes things here. Sounds good.
All right, so Thomas, you know, you had two that just kind of had a slighter fade to it, and then you had their last one there kind of was really spinny and kind of <laughs> fell off to the right a little bit yeah. there. So, I mean, that's what that setting is supposed to promote. So it's not like a, a, a jab at you or anything, but... That was um, a bad swing, but yeah, it, it was definitely harder for me to get the ball to go to the left. And I, it's something I've, I've been fighting this year is a bit of a, a bit of a fade. So I would be least likely to put myself in this position right now. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and that's, that's why, you know, at the end we maybe will find a setting that is tailored to your swing. But for the sake of this right now, we're looking at the T2 setting, which is the farthest in the toe. Um, you know, of course, with that last one, the speed jumped up quite a bit. Uh, but the first two, the spin. Uh, you know, were pretty solid. And they carried, you know, over 280. One went, I think, almost 290 in carry. Yep. So, you know, it's still pretty good. Uh, when hit well, considering it's that fade bias, which in most cases will take a tad bit of distance off because um, of higher spin, right? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't feel very comfortable with it. I think mentally knowing that I'd put it in and the toe didn't help and also the wind coming off the left <laughs> made it a little bit harder for me. So let's slam it in the heel and see what happens. Yeah, that might be something yep. uh, that fits your eye a little better. Yeah. can definitely see Thomas right away the dispersion difference um, between you know the H2 or the heel 2 setting and then the toe 2 setting on this map over here you know three left of the of the center line three right of the center line and then the standard as of now of course is the most in the middle so um, now when you are looking at these at address the, both with the toe setting and then the heel setting, nothing changes, right? It's just, yeah. that's just simply about the center of gravity. Nothing changed, it's just the center of gravity. Um, I was not expecting to be this big of a exaggeration per, per se, um, but I was really surprised because that last one I felt like I missed hit. It just kind of stayed right there. It didn't really curve too much to the right. It felt like it was going to push a little to the right, yeah. but it just kind of hovered right on the uh, my, my target line. The other two, I don't know what it was, but I was able to just feel more comfortable to get through the ball, and they, you know, they went pretty far. That those were the best yeah. two swings that I had made today for sure. Yeah, I mean, looking at you know the numbers on those, and I mean the uh, H2 setting, your ca your carry number on average is 289.9. You're I mean 290 yards, and it's the farthest right now as well at 313 in total. Height-wise, everything stayed pretty similar, which. Um, kind of should expect if you're just messing with kind of uh, heel to toe yeah, center really gravity. Changing the loft, yeah. So it's right around 110 to 115 uh, of height there. The curvature is the big one, of course, where, you know, of course with the miss hit there on the, the, the fade setting on the toe, uh, really exaggerated things with that one. But you did have that one on average uh, 14 feet to the left with the heel setting there. And the other two settings are uh, averaging a right curve. So, yep. Um, interesting there, but now we can kind of take a look at other settings. Um, yeah. So, so far in the Surefit Hosley, you've been in the A1, which is standard, um, not adjusting for the lie or face angle or anything like that. So now we can maybe play with that. Yeah, so let's go back to the neutral setting with the uh, center of gravity first, and then let's, let's put it on in C1. So C1 is kind of like your, your lowest, probably your lowest ball flight you'd expect, okay. um, more fade bias. Um, probably, I would expect it maybe to be lower, lower spinning, maybe okay. go pretty, pretty far with regard because it's gonna be less lop on the club. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so those three definitely had a little bit more of a, a little bit of fade going going to them there. Yeah, yep. yeah, definitely three fades there. Uh, I think there was one that was maybe a little bit more of left, left to right spin than um, a couple of the other ones. But uh, you know, looking at the dispersion map, I'll bring that up, and you can definitely tell that there was a bit of a uh, a little bit of a fade bias. But I mean, they're hovering right around that uh, that center line, so uh, that was a pretty solid uh, test there. And one thing. 
to note is so the essentially the loft is decreased in this setting, right, from 10 Correct. degrees. Correct. Yep. One thing I noticed there, that last swing, I think that was the highest bow speed that I have seen. I would expect a little less loft on the club would maybe yeah. get a little more bow speed. Is it 168.7? Is that what you're saying Yeah, yeah. There? Yep, yeah, on that so last 168.7 one. 168.7 when I have a club speed at 112 and a half, it's 1.5 smash. So I really, it was a really efficient swing with that. Able to get mm -hmm. a little bit more bow speed, for sure. Yep, and looking at the average height, that did drop as well, about uh, anywhere from about five to 10 feet, depending on which setting you're looking at so far. So that's the lowest height so far. Okay. And if you know, you're know you in that setting, you're dropping the loft a tad. So what uh, we got another setting in play here. Which one are we looking at here now, Thomas? So we're talking about height. Yeah. I want, I want to play around and see what happens if I put this 10 and 10 degree driver at like A3. Okay. So a little bit more, you know, I don't like the ball kind of fall into the right as okay. much. But I want to see if I can get the ball maybe going even a little higher and see. It's kind of what happens when we're just kind of playing around. This will be the last play around, and then the last one I'll probably just put myself in a setting here and see if I can get the ball to go okay. as far and straight as I possibly can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's another one in the sky. Yeah, it definitely seemed like it's the easiest shot to hit. If I want to hit a high, high straight ball with this club, it's going to do it every time. Yeah. So yep. the loft on this one essentially is increasing now, right? So yep. you went from the kind of the lowest loft setting um, with C1, it went to A3, which is going to increase it. So I'm sure right at address you notice something different. <laughs> I did say, oh boy, when I put that club down, because <laughs> yeah, it felt like a toe was a little more in the air, and I could see a lot more loft. And I'm just like, this thing is just. It'll launch pretty high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to say the dispersion out there <laughs> with these three is very tiny. Yeah, that's uh, I mean it's left of center, which we should expect um, with that face maybe closing a tad, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, that's incredible that that dispersion and the carry distance kept up even though the ball is flying 140 something feet uh, in the air. Uh, the, the carry distance has kept up pretty good. I think all of them were over 280 yards. So. Well, there is something to be said about having a loft on a golf club. Loft is your friend. Not only does loft get you to get able to carry a little bit further as long as you get in that optimal area, but when you go to this exaggeration, I feel like I could hit that shot all day. I mean, I go as far as what I wanted to, but it was just up in the air and straight every single time. Right. You see, the dispersion was, was good. It just felt so easy to get that mm -hmm. club face to square up coming through. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, so your height actually jumped up to on average 143 feet in the air, which is, it's pretty high. It's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, but the dispersion with that, those three shots is, a, is phenomenal. Uh, so that's something to take note of there. So uh, now we've played with two settings of the center gravity weight track in the back. Well, I'll, I'll, including the standard, I guess that'd be three settings there. We did the far heel, the far toe, and then in the neutral. Um, in the Sherford house, we've done a couple of the extremes there as well. Now you've seen your swing today. You've got a little bit of information on how you're hitting the ball right now. Uh, you've got the Sherford house to play with. You've got the Sherford weight track in the back to play with. Can you kind of maybe fit yourself for this driver and see how you can uh, maximize distance? Yeah, let's, let's do that. So one thing I did notice is I was getting the highest ball speed or lower spin per se when I had that setting in that heel H2 setting. So right off the bat, I'm going to put the weight on this track back here on the H2 setting. I yep. don't like the ball falling to the right, especially when I got this wind off the, off the left. Okay. I feel like I'm fighting it for sure. Yep, so so far, your farthest distance, your farthest carry, your farthest total, and your lowest spin is in the H2 setting. Okay. So, so H2 setting to start with there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to talk about loft. So right now I've got this at A3. That was the last setting we tested. I noticed that was going 143 feet in the yeah. air. I want to be more around about 100. Okay. 100 to 110 is pretty much where I want to be with, with yeah. regards to the driver. So I'm going to go the other way. So I'm also going to lower the loft on this driver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in an upright setting, which I do like my, my drivers to, to be at. Um, but I'm going to put it at D2. So D2 is like minus three quarters of a degree. Okay. Um, and also upright. So essentially this is, is max draw bias 
Okay. As I can possibly get with okay. this club. Okay, because you're really trying to move that ball right to left. Yeah. More so than the other way. Correct. I don't want to. I don't want that spinny one that kind of goes to the right. There was a couple there with when I had that weight in the toe, or I had that C1 setting that was just kind of too far to the right. Yeah. I feel like it's harder for me to control. All right. Well, so we've got the weight track in the H2 setting, and we've got the Sherfit house in the D2 setting. This is going to create a lower loft, but some draw bias for Thomas. So we'll see how this works here. All right. Let's see it. All right, well, Thomas, we've got your three shots with kind of the setting that you chose for yourself there. Um, taking a look at those, I've got them up on the screen here highlighted. Um, you had sort of the first one that you said that you maybe hit it off the toe yeah. just a little bit, um, which dropped that spin down to 16 to 65. Uh, but it carried over 280, uh, it jumped to 310 total yards still. And then that second one you demolished. The second one was the best one so of the day. So yeah. nearly 295 in carry. Yeah. So that was by far the farthest carry distance of the day. Uh, and you totaled that at 315 yards. And then this last one you thought maybe it was a little spinny, but actually stayed down in that 2300 range, which you like. So I would say solid results. Yeah, uh, especially that, that last shot that I hit, I felt like it was just kind of pushing a little to the right, but just hung in there. It's not like it wasn't going as far right as those other yeah. ones that I had missed to the right, which for me is important because I've been struggling this year with a little bit of a little bit of fade, a little bit of a cross swing with, with the driver, causing that ball to kind of fade. So the upright line go setting, the weight in the heel has helped me with regards to limit that, that miss as much as I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was some, that was, you know, some good tests there. And then the dispersion, it definitely is competitive um, carry distance wise and total distance wise with uh, the rest of the settings is actually probably the best considering the fact that you do like to hit it more well, with the right to left trajectory and uh, eliminate that right miss. Uh, so this is, uh, there's a lot of shots here to, to take a look at. You want to break them down for me? Yeah, let's take a quick look. Okay, Thomas, you got the data there. That was quick math. What, 18 golf shots off the tee. A lot of adjustability settings to play with there. We did a little bit of them, but uh, what do you find in there? Yeah, so club speed ranging from about 110 and a half to 112 with all the different settings here. Um, we've been testing quite a bit today, so I'm definitely warmed up and loose and yeah. probably getting fatigued here at the point because <laughs> we're doing some driver testing here as well. Got nice wear patch going on. Um, so first thing I'm looking at is ball speed. So if we take a look at ball speed, what's interesting to see is the C1 setting. So the lowest lofted, most kind of fade bias setting for me was 167. So on average, gave me the highest ball speed numbers. Um, if we look at um, the last setting that we had, you said if you kind of fit yourself and kind of see how you can do. The miss hit my first swing only gave me ball speed of 161, but it still went 310. Yeah. So there was a good miss hit. The other two were 165 and 168 with regards to ball speed. So it was very, very competitive yeah. compared to that setting there as well. I just had a miss hit going in there. Um, spin rate. So spin rate definitely uh, changed depending on what setting that we had. Uh, if we look at the, you know, the highest extreme, I guess we can take a look at the A3 setting. So when I have the loft up 1.5 degrees of loft, so 11 and a half, we'll notice the spin rate was about 2,900 RPMs. Yeah. Um, when I had it in the T2 setting, so the toe setting, I had 3,000 RPMs of spin on that too. That was more the curve of the yep. ball creating that, that spin there as well. Um, the other two other options were great though, between like 2,100 to 2,400 spin. Um, so very, very good numbers. When I had that in the heel setting, so H2 both times, the spin was about 20, 2,185 and 2,169. Yeah. So that's curve of the ball. A little bit easier to get the ball going left, so you sure. get that spin rate down there as well. Yeah. Um, launch angle is really interesting with the A3 setting, 15.3 degrees of with regards to launch angle, flying 144 feet in the air. Wow. So that was that 11 and a half degree yeah. setting. Um, and then if we look at 
the uh, C1 setting, so that was our lowest setting. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that was 12.2 degrees of loft um, with regards. To, sorry, 12.2 degree launch angle, and only 107 feet in the air. So there was about a 40 feet range in, yeah. in height just by changing up the loft, um, and then there was about a three degree change in launch angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's some clear differences there, and uh, that's one thing we should note too. Is you know this could and for your sake, what you're trying to accomplish is about that 100 feet in the air. And for you, that that A3 setting when you're really launching the ball in the air, not going to be right for you, right? But if someone is hitting kind of lower launch angles off the tee, that might be for them. And so in this yep. instance, the Sherpit Hosel, um, something that setting won't really work for your game. But again, there's every swing is different. And so that's just an example of that. And then, of course, the weight tracks we can get into too, as we talk about dispersion left and right, but also like if someone's duck hooking the ball, for example, um, and that, that spin drops dramatically and you're kind of getting no carry on the ball, that's where you go maybe toe setting. Correct. And increase yeah. that carry and uh, increase that spin as well. Yeah. Um, I think curve on the ball is an interesting thing to look at. Curve and face angle. Okay. So if we look, jump into that A3 setting again, the most draw bias position that we had at, it, at the curve, I actually drew the ball. 7.1 feet of curve to the left on average. Okay. When I had it in the H2 setting, so the heel setting, yeah. I also created curve of 14 feet to the left. Okay. So both draw bias options, whether by putting the weight in the heel or by making the club right upright, Yeah. Um, I was able to get the ball to curve to the left. Those were the only two settings that had curve to the left. Okay. The other setting that was very, very straight was the final setting that you asked me, hey, can you fit yourself? I had 1.3 feet of curve to the right. So okay. basically dead straight. Dead straight, Exactly yeah. what I'm after. Um, so that, that was that was incredible. I was really happy with, with, with that. Um, we start looking at the other settings. So C1 setting, so that was um, a little bit flatter setting. We take a look here, you see I had 48 feet of curve to the right. Yeah. Um, the T2 setting, so when I had the weight all the way out on the toe, I had 82 feet of curve to the right. Now there's one in there that was a yeah. misset that was exaggerating that. But you can see the differences in kind of curve there. Um, and then it's always interesting looking at the dispersion patterns. So if we're looking here, the first thing you mentioned was, wow, how consistent it was when I had it in that A3 setting. Yeah. It was same, the same, same thing. That circle is tiny. Yeah. It's basically the same spot every time. Yeah. Um, we took a look, take a look at the other draw bias positions we had. So we had the H2 setting. So that's the heel yeah. um, weight. That's, it was over to the left. Um, we look at the uprights, uh, the other setting that we had. So H2 and with upright, that was also over to the left. That was the last setting yeah. that, I, that I wanted. Yeah, customizing it for yourself. Yep. And you did get that one uh, on average to go left a little bit as well um, and close that face a little bit more. So um, you're seeing pretty distinct differences, right, with these settings. Now we kind of took it to the extreme with some of these, right, like we did H2 instead of H1 uh, or T2 instead of T1 or um, we went to the extremes with like A3 and C1. But point being, you can get several yards of left to right dispersion or several yards of carry or hundreds of RPMs of spin. Uh, just by uh, making some adjustments to these settings here. Yeah, that is correct. Now, what we're seeing here with regards to dispersion, probably won't expect to see that in a, in a fitting with regards to maybe seeing 20 or 30 yards changes. But what you may see is you, if you just adjust the, um, the setting on, with regards to the adjustable weight on the, on the back, yeah. you may see eight to 16 yard changes in, in, your, in your ball flight. Yeah. Um, you, Add that and that hosel in, you may see some extra there too. So that's how yeah. I was able to get the extra yeah. changes here too. So really interesting stuff. Um, this is a great way to kind of educate where the ball will go if you make those adjustments. Now everyone reacts differently to a golf club setting, so there's different ways. You can flatten the club, you can make it upright. You can put the weight in the toe, you can make, put the weight in the heel. There's definitely different options out there. Yeah, and that's the best part about this, right? Like these clubs can fit any player because they uh, there's so many adjustable options with them. Uh, that you can pair them with each other. There's, I think, 16 on the Sherford Housel. Now you add the weight track in the back on the TSI-3, and the options are really unlimited. So 
Um, if you're interested in a Titleist TSI 3 driver, you've got all these adjustable settings that you can use to benefit your swing. Um, you can talk to one of our experts at Second Swing, whether in the store or whether through our online fitting and support team. And one of our team members will take care of you and help you out with your new driver and help you hit longer, straighter tee shots. So, uh, Thomas, thank you for uh, helping us out today and, and letting us know. 